Hello everyone and welcome back to the Damage Report. I'm John Idarola, joined today on a Wednesday. I know this is gonna freak you all out, but I'm gonna need you to center yourselves. Brett Ehrlich joins us. Brett, how's it going? Holy shnikes, what a crazy experience it is. It's hump day and because it's hump day, it's important that you remember that's the day that I'm on the show to this week. But next week, forget this, week. this ever happened. Just take a forget me now and move on. Wait, so I know, so you are, you're filling in on a Wednesday, which means that Friday, the day that we take out the trash is uh, is Brettless. We're actually gonna be joined by Adrian Lawrence, which is very exciting. Uh, is that not happening again next week? I thought that it was next week too. It's next, it's next week, week too. I'm not sure it's next week. Well, I we're think gonna next week we're back to normal and the following week, then it's a crazy one again. That's also fine, Here. but in I'm any I'm going event, to Joshie's bachelor party. <laughs> That is exciting. Um, that, that's why most people's schedule is gonna be messed up next week is, is due to this bachelor party. But anyway, uh, exciting stuff and uh, the garbage is still gonna go out. But Adrian Lawrence is gonna get to choose one. What's that gonna be like? Tune in on Friday to find out. Tune in right now as you are for a ton. We're gonna be catching up on some of the craziness going on in the uh, SCOTUS hearings for Katanji Brown Jackson. It's been bonkers. We've got crazy information coming out of Ukraine. A uh, an intercepted conversation uh, between D Russian soldiers about some of their complaints about how the war is being waged is fascinating stuff. So we're gonna break that down. We've got Disney walkouts. We've got endorsements being retracted for a MAGA candidate, which I think is hilarious. So we're gonna break that down and a whole lot more. So thank you everyone for being out there. Uh, thank you to the awesome members of the audience. Uh, which have been sending stuff recently, including I saw Jess Ortega's in the chat, sent us this awesome diamond art of a dragon rampant that I showed off on the pre-show, uh, I believe yesterday. Awesome community out there, thank you for supporting us. And if you'd like to support just slightly more, you can hit the like button and share the stream so that people know that we're live. And uh, with all that said, Brett, are you ready to start breaking down some of these videos. I'm super stoked and excited about it, John. What an, what a energetic center of the week, right smack dab in the middle, the genitals of the week, as it were. That's Monday, not even, Tuesday that's is not the even left the middle. leg, Thursday, Friday is the right leg, and I'm right here in the in the zone. To all potential advertisers, we are a reputable <laughs> and serious show, willing to ban any co-hosts if that's what's needed. Anyway, uh, with all that said, and hopefully somewhat less of that being said, let's jump into this. Oh, I mean, how she got around that is unbelievable. But obviously, she's qualified. Obviously, she's going to pass. The question is, will she get close to 60 votes? She I mean, said the board doesn't know if they're teaching CRT in the classroom. But every other what good school, is having a board, I have then? so many friends on boards of school districts, and they do know what's being course. taught. And Ted Cruz brought out, I think it was Ted Cruz, was Ted Cruz that brought out all these books yeah. from that school and said, this is what they're teaching in second grade. This is what they're teaching in third or fifth grade. And it's information right. I don't want my daughter to learn. Right. Yeah, I assume that if you were to compile a list of all the things Ainsley Earhart is very uncomfortable with her child learning about, that would be an extensive list and effectively school would become a little bit of daycare, a little bit of lunch, maybe some rah, 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 America is the best country ever. But uh, bear in mind, they're, they're using this attack that Katanji Brown Jackson, because she's on the board of this school is responsible for not only every book that is taught, but for every misinterpretation of that book by every conservative across the country, she's responsible for that too. But it went beyond just what you saw. So let's get into a little bit more of Fox and Friends complaining about the nominee here. And, and Cruz just, said he claimed one of the books accused uh, infants of being racist and he asked are babies racist and she said I have not reviewed those books and they had not come up in her work right. as a judge which is one of the things she said a lot yesterday and I have got a feeling <laughs> she's going to say a lot of it again today that kicks like off a, today a children's time. book with all these babies are babies racist right no but everyone knows they are uh, everybody knows kids are racist. So anyway, uh, it goes without saying. Uh, so we'll see uh, the questions asked now. But I just do think I think it's a joke that people are getting mad at uh, Republicans or Democrats for asking tough questions uh, because she's an African American woman. I think that it would be insulting not to ask tough questions to everyone equally. Just keep it out of 11th grade uh, dating practices and keep it away from beer uh, beer trips to Red Sox games. And I think people everything's on the table. 
Okay, so there's obviously a lot there that we're gonna dive into, including uh, Kill Me there pulling a Lindsey Graham by making the whole thing over this historic nomination, their grievances about tough questions being asked of some of the most flawed candidates for the Supreme Court in recent history to uh, Ducey there saying, well, she was asked if uh, this book came up in her legal work and she said, no, I expect more of that. Because it's it's true, if you asked her if she's eating puppies and she said no, would you expect that she would also deny eating more baby versions of household pets? Yes, the, the book for kids did not come up in her legal work. Ask a dumb question, get an answer that you will then use to make yourself look even more dumb. Brett, what are we supposed to do? This is how they're using this time. Listen, Georgetown Country Day School is a private school. Mm-hmm. How ritzy is it? Ben Mankiewicz went there. So just know Did he it really? is for elitists mm-hmm. that don't have any connection to the public school system. And I think that conservative senators and Congress people more than anyone would advocate for putting any weird, insane curriculum into a private school education. And they do on the daily, that is actually their goal, is to replace the entire public school system with for profit, private, Christian academies for learning that will do exactly all the fundamental things that when you break it down, even though the specifics are different and they say critical race theory and they say uh, teaching gender grooming. But in terms of like in instilling values and fundamental understandings of things that wouldn't fall into your tech, your typical math and science curriculum, they wanna put that in all kinds of conservative educational curricula. Yeah, And so it's a wild, stupid double standard. And I think that it's pretty obvious to everyone who's not just a Fox News cultist. Exactly, yeah, like the the government should like be hands off, except in this particular case where a private school, which they don't want the government to regulate. At a school, a book is available that they're misinterpreting. So the government needs to get in. And at the end of the day, what all of this is about, other than just making themselves look cool to their base, because somehow that works, is uh, is encouraging the banning of more books. The banning of books, by the way, it, there was at least one or two books on that list that are that are theoretically available at the schools that Ted Cruz sends his his kids to. Did that not aggrieve him? He's totally fine with them going there. You know why? Because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. He's using it as a prop. He doesn't actually care. And and I want to I want to I want to highlight Ted Cruz here. But first, I want to acknowledge because Ainsley Earhart was. Shocked there that someone on the board of a school doesn't necessarily know the specific line by line content of every book that might theoretically be available to children. Uh, boards of trustees in independent schools, turns out, are different than in school public school districts. I don't even think they know this stuff in public school districts. But trustees at private schools almost entirely focus on governance and direction, like a five year strategic plan, and leave operational issues like curriculum to the heads of schools and their staff. But again, you'd want to know that if you cared at all about the thing that you're talking about. If it is instead a convenient ruse to fill a bit of time and to to cause your base to despise this woman that's very well liked by the way, uh, then you don't care so much about that. You will call these sorts of BS diversions tough questions as Kilmeade uh, says there. They're not, they're not tough, they're nonsensical, they're insane. There's a lot of baked in subtle racism there. That doesn't make them tough though. But Ted Cruz will evoke a, a you know, Paul's a, a Simonson of Simonson Science thing. If we bring up this picture, he had a number of displays like this. Full blown up pages from books for kids. Because the cut like kids being introduced to the concept that racial bias exists is unacceptable. If you are a very, very dumb person that is fine with racial bias. Brett, thoughts? I love any time that there is a large sign over the shoulder of someone in Congress because I then imagine them going into Kinko's or FedEx office and just giggling the whole time as they're waiting for the order to come in. Like this is gonna get them. Uh, Ted (laughs) Cruz is grandstanding. It is only grandstanding. It only ever will be grandstanding and anyone who says otherwise doesn't understand that those giant foam core printouts are literally on grand stands (laughs) behind them. 
That's a great point, and I've never actually thought about that. But um, no, they appreciate a good prop. Uh, AOC pointed out another one of the props that Ted Cruz uses tweeting, when you're showing off the next book you want banned with the perfect edges and everything to underscore to everyone, you haven't actually read it. And I will ask everyone in the audience, how many, I'm not, I'm not gonna say chapters, I'm not gonna say pages, how many words of the end of policing has Ted Cruz read? Do each you believe he read a word? I don't believe he read a word. Oh no, and e- each so. each situation's ridiculous because either he didn't read a word, which is very obviously the case. He saw it in some tweet, or he read every single word, and in which case, what a huge waste of time. Mm-hmm. He's pouring over these things. No, he's and he's not going to read through it all the way and have like this thoughtful back and forth. All he they ever do. I've talked to multiple people who are saying I can't believe they're grooming kids in schools with critical uh. race theory, teaching kids that it's evil to be white. That's not the situation. The whole point of school is to teach people, yeah, things to know, but also how to think. And I don't mean what to think. I mean how to think. How to encounter a debatable, a much debated issue and find out what side of it you come down on. And also being able to argue both sides, Mm -hmm. understand both sides. And then also take criticism and understand with that same mental muscle, how to frame these discussions in the first place. And we can have honest discussions about what should be in high school, elementary school, preschool curriculum. But I don't think any of the people who are making headlines for the the subject itself want to have a serious conversation. Yeah. They just want to signal cultural issues to a base rather than deliver tangible legislative results that will help them in the real world and in real life and in real kitchen table issues, not water cooler ones. That is all very well said and very reasonable and thus it has no part in any of this. Just doesn't. So you would be okay with the Supreme Court leaving the question of interracial marriage to the states? Yes, I think that that's something that uh, if you're not wanting the Supreme Court to weigh in on issues like that, uh, you're not going to be able to have your cake and eat it too. I think that's hypocritical. About Griswold versus Connecticut. Well, you you can list a whole host of issues when it comes down to whatever they are. uh, I'm going to say that they're not going to all make you happy uh, within a given state, but that we're better off having states manifest their points of view rather than homogenizing it across the country as Roe versus Wade did. So that is Senator Mike Braun, who in this uh, nationwide conversation, that we're, that we're having on uh, the, the SCOTUS and uh, you know where, what, what judicial philosophy we want to run America, where our priorities should lie. He gets drawn into literally saying, no, I think if states want to outlaw interracial marriage, it's not on the federal government to decide that they can't do that. And look, I, rightfully people are focusing on the interracial marriage part. I think it's obvious that's insane, but they also get into things about access to uh, contraceptives and there was a long list of topics. He's apparently perfectly fine with throwing back to the states. And Brett, we can have, I think, a debate about areas where states should be able to decide. We are, after all, uh, you know, we're a country set up. We're not France or whatever. We delegate certain powers to the states. It's it's a different way of doing things. But we also expect, and I think, are allowed to demand that there's a base level of protection and respect for human rights human dignity um, and we should not simply like consign people to hope your state acts rights maybe you'll maybe you'll have rights you know maybe or maybe not maybe you should move like no this is still a country we are allowed to have standards and literally not being barred from marrying someone of a different race feels like it falls uh, below that threshold yeah, like the reason it got to the Supreme Court is someone had to do that. Had and that's to. what the Supreme Court does. And and frequently the Supreme Court will go back and be like, all right, Congress, you, you gotta do a law. Or that Congress, the congressional law was an overreach, fine. But if this guy, th- this is what's horrifying and or hilarious. This guy thinks he's nailing an argument. Yeah. And that argument is that it was a mistake. To say, hey, enough's enough. 
you should be mar- able to marry someone who's of a different race in the United States. And he thinks it is a great argument to say, listen, if South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia wants to make it illegal and annul your marriage the minute you cross the state line, yep. well, that's up to them. That fundamental premise that there should be rules on a federal level is not only the Constitution, (laughs) that's what it does. But also specifically when it comes to your rights, the Bill of Rights, the amendments to the Constitution, they're like, all right, those rules for setting things up, what the judiciary, the, the, the other branches of government does is good. But we also gotta write down before I sign on to this country you want, we gotta write down Things that no matter how crazy the states get, yeah, no, that's what it says. The the amendments, you don't know what the seventh, eighth, ninth amendment does. Those are the ones that are like, all right, the, the rest of this stuff we leave up to the states. But fundamental fundamental guarantees of rights, that's what the Bill of Rights does. And that's frequently what the decisions of the Supreme Court are all about. Does this state policy run in conflict? To the the things we enumerated as things you can't violate with state laws. Yeah, yeah. And if you are relatively new to American politics and you think, well, why would you need federal protections against these things? I mean, literally, you're talking about them making interracial marriage illegal. They would never. I don't know. They're about to overturn Roe v. Wade after more than half a century of that being a guaranteed right. They want to relitigate all of that. They're literally banning talking about. The fact that gay people exist and that slavery was a thing, that racism every like there is you think we're advancing. No, there is advancement, but there's also a splitting going on. Uh, Many of these areas would uh, willfully jump off a cliff into ignorance and religious dogma and all of that. Um, By the way, AOC uh, rightfully pointed out this uh, Mike Braun thing. And we're gonna give you the update. She said, can journalists please not pretend it's normal for a US Senator to declare that the Supreme Court was wrong to legalize interracial marriage? He's okay with it being illegal now. His new statement not walking anything back during a SCOTUS nomination that he'd be voting on, thanks. So let's get to that statement because there's been a lot of criticism of Mike Braun. He said, I misunderstood a line of questioning that ended up being about interracial marriage. Let me be clear on that issue. There is no question the constitution prohibits discrimination of any kind based on race. That is not something that is even up for debate. And I condemn racism in any form at all levels and by any states, entities or individuals. He didn't comment, by the way, on whether he also misunderstood the line of questioning on Roe or Griswold, or how what he just said actually fits with his original statement. It's not like there was ambiguity to the question or to the answer. He specifically said the Supreme Court shouldn't be getting involved. He's attempting to reverse it and claiming that he's anti-racist in all of these different areas, none of which he'd identify as racism, by the way. That's the evasion that they have. I hate racism, which thankfully we banished when we elected Barack Obama as president. But she points out that doesn't actually walk back what he says. He needs to go on record to clarify whether he believes states should be allowed to reinstate anti-miscegenation laws and whether it's beliefs SCOTUS to should overturn Loving v. Virginia, as he does with Roe v. Wade, because he's not actually saying any of those things. He would like you to back off and stop pressuring him, but he does actually stand by what he said because that is reflective of a lot of Republicans positions on these issues. Yeah, the Constitution, there's a lot of reasons why the Constitution prohibits discrimination based on race. But the the key operative, the operative term I would add is it it bans the discrimination based on race now. Now it does, because originally it said that black people were three fifths of a human being. Mm-hmm. In the Constitution of the United States of America, and thanks to the activism, civil war suffragists, and and uh, and, and basically progressive ideology in action, and the Supreme Court making judgments on same, like yeah. now it's it's not okay to discriminate based on race. And without, and if if he got his way, it would never be able to do that going forward. Exactly. Yeah, no, they, they want us to go backward and they will occasionally admit that openly. Now, that said, uh, we have something very different to address. So apologies in advance, but we're gonna take a look at this. Not surprisingly, given how she got this job, most of the talk in Washington was not about what she's done, how she thinks, what she's like as a person, but instead about how she looks. It's not shallow or anything. Here's the shallowest of all, Senator Cory Booker of New Jersey. 
I could not stop being just joyous that you were sitting in my office, and I couldn't stop bringing up to you the historical nature of this. Forgive me, I grew up in a small black church where I was taught uh, to make a joyous noise unto the Lord, and this is not a normal day for America. We have never had this moment before. <laughs> I grew up in a small black church, Naden. Another lecture about the black experience from a blue-eyed Yale graduate who in fact grew up in an all-white town, the son of IBM executives. Is there anyone on this planet phonier than Cory Booker? Okay, so uh, Tucker Carlson is of course free uh, to not be impressed with Cory Booker, not like him or whatever, he can do that. And he can say whatever he wants. If he wants to cultivate an audience who loves his uh, snide, condescending derision, implying that Cory Booker, because his parents worked for IBM, or because he has blue eyes, thus isn't black. That's explicitly what he's saying. Tucker Carlson, like guests on Joe Rogan, gets to decide who is black. It's not up to them, it's up to Tucker Carlson, an incredibly wealthy heir to a fortune. He gets to decide, but to be clear, he is not just saying that Cory Booker technically doesn't count as black. During this nomination of literally the first black woman to ever be nominated to the Supreme Court, He's also very much making the case that she doesn't count either, as he'll explain in this clip. To her credit, Kandaji Brown Jackson doesn't seem quite so fraudulent, that would be impossible. But she does, and this is the key, share a resume that is strikingly similar to Cory Booker's. Daughter of academics, graduate of Harvard College and Harvard Law School, on the board of the single wokest day school in Washington, D.C., etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know exactly how that story turns out. Because in the end, when they tell you you're getting a black nominee, they're not talking about the son of a maid and a farm worker from Pinpoint, Georgia. In fact, we already have a Supreme Court justice like that. His name is Clarence Thomas. He is a great man, even if no one in Washington will acknowledge that. No, what they mean when they tell you you're getting a black Supreme Court justice is that you're getting yet another Democratic Party robot with the same rigid and totally predictable views as your average professional class white liberal, but who happens to be tanner than Joe Biden. So identical, identical to everyone else in power, just a different shade. And the shade, to be fair, does make all the difference. That's the whole point of the exercise. Because of the way that she looks, Brown Jackson, who again, is just a garden variety white liberal in what she believes. But because of the way she looks, this nominee will get nowhere near the vetting of a typical Supreme Court justice. And that, whatever your politics are, is a shame. He's just, he just thinks it's a real shame that there's no vetting. There's not you know, a week of incredibly underhanded, disgusting QAnon signaling attacks or anything like that. Uh, she was just chosen because she's black, but also she's not black. Because you, you've heard this a million times before. Uh, they will set up all of these insane standards for you to be considered uh, good enough if you're a black person. And then if you ever dare to actually do those things, go to the schools that they say you have to go to, achieve the things they say you have to achieve, well then you don't count as black anymore. He is saying right there, because she went to Harvard, because she did these things, she just happens to be tanner than Joe Biden. She's not black at that point, no more than Cory Booker. I mean, he has blue eyes, thus he does not have the black experience. He has never faced racism, he has never faced any of that. Tucker Carlson, the incredibly wealthy multimillionaire guy who's never worked an honest job in his life and was assured that if he failed in literally everything he did, he would have hundreds of millions of dollars to fall back on is the arbiter of who gets to be black for his audience at the very least, Brett. Tucker Carlson's argument is that he is angry that she in the end was chosen based on her performance, right? He's saying at the end of the day, she has exactly the ideology and the background and the experience from a non-racial perspective that you you look for in a Supreme Court justice. This is after ye months and weeks of him complaining that she's chosen just because of the color of her skin. Well, your argument is, is it? That, that she's chosen <laughs> this the exact same way that a white person would be chosen. And isn't that your bastardization interpretation of the I have a dream speech anyway, Tucker? You total idiot. You can't even get your own arguments right. But the thing is, you talk so smarmily and cutely, you still think you're that like 25 year old wunderkind, son of Dickie Carlson, that everyone watching who's a 95 year old conservative schmuck looks at you and is like, oh, he's such a sweet jerk. And he's my sweet little jerk. Ugh. That, that um, is the only appeal. He is, it, look, nobody's, nobody's tuning in to learn anything. 
Nobody's turning it to like that to expand their thinking. It is just point me at these people that everyone says has done the right things. They're good people. They deserve their positions. I don't like the idea that a black woman could deserve to be on the court. So give me an excuse to hate her and to look down her. Tell me I'm still better than her. And that's what he delivers for his audience. And and he so he says a bunch of things. First of all, he talks about Cory Booker growing up in a white neighborhood. Do you know how they got that house in that white neighborhood? They tried to buy it outright. The black family that tried to buy the house in the white neighborhood, but they would not allow the Cory Booker, Cory Booker's parents to buy that house. In fact, they had to send a white family into that house pretending yes. to be the bookers so they could buy that house in that white neighborhood. Oh, he and must have just missed that. Tucker just Corey Booker's fake that. is F, but he did catch like a really important uh, pass against Notre Dame once, so I'm a That's huge true. fan. That's true. No, but this isn't about like he's fake as hell, but he also like burst into a burning building to save someone. Like he cares. He's a fine guy. He's just a little cheesy. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, by the way, um you can live in an area that has a lot of white people in it and go to a black church. That's a thing that can actually happen, Tucker. Anyway, uh, we have got to go to break, everybody. So uh, we're gonna answer some of your comments and questions and all that. And when we come back, some amazing updates coming out of Ukraine as well as Florida, uh, both fraught areas of the world after this. And now you see Ukraine uh, just kept poking the bear and poking the bear, which is Russia. And Russia invaded, and and the truth is, and this is the hard truth to accept, there is no win for Ukraine here. Uh, Russia is being very successful in their invasion, even though we hear different things on television. They, the, the things that we see and we know that are actually happening there, doesn't. I don't see a way out for Ukraine. Okay, so Marjorie Green is continuing her Ukraine can't win, they can't defend their country, they shouldn't try and we certainly shouldn't help them. That campaign continues right there. Despite all of the news she acknowledges showing that Russia is having a lot of difficulties. She secretly has sources inside of Ukraine or Russia that are proving that things are going much better, I guess. And what I wanna talk about in this block is, is this outright like opposition to what Ukraine is trying to do. Is that helpful to the GOP? Bearing in mind that they're already being attacked over this in ads like this one from Midas Touch. We are not the fringe, we are the base of the party. Ukraine uh, just kept poking the bear and poking the bear. There is no win for Ukraine here. Uh, Russia is being very successful in their invasion. We are not the fringe, we are the base of the party. Can we give a round of applause for Russia? We are not the fringe. We are the base of the party. Remember that Zelensky is a thug. Remember that the Ukrainian government is incredibly corrupt and it is incredibly evil. We are not the fringe. We are the base of the party. This is genius. Putin declares a big portion of Ukraine. Putin declares it as independent. How smart is that? And he's gonna go in and be a peacekeeper. We are not the fringe, we are the base of the party. President Biden was heckled by outspoken Republican Congresswoman Lauren Boebert as he was talking about army veterans who died from cancer. We are not the fringe, we are the base of the party. There are new questions concerning the federal investigation into Florida Congressman Matt Gates and if he violated federal sex trafficking laws. We are not the fringe, we are the base of the party. We're now hearing reports from around the country that if your paper sailboat goes down the street and into a drain, don't try to get it back because you'll hear, we're not the fringe, we're the base of the party echoing from the sewer depths. But Brett, I wanna jump into it. They are like, there's a, there's a growing number of what is being referred to as the Putin wing of the party that it seems more aggrieved with Ukraine than with Russia in this situation where one has invaded the other, who's to say which is which. Uh, does this matter? Will this hurt them? Is this a good strategy to take uh, as we roll towards these midterm elections? Will this hurt them is a question whose answer is dependent on uh, consistency of messaging and effectiveness of messaging. Mm -hmm. By the way, good it reference. I've got some balloons for the kids <laughs> in the back if you want. Yeah, uh, to get they all float at Brett's house. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
terrifying. <sighs> but uh, you know, it's that's an effective ad, and I love the concept. I love thinking about like the edit chamber as they were doing that. Is people are like, all right, all right, I got most of this worked out, but where do I put the Matt Gates pedophilia stuff? Like, is it early? Is this too early? Should I move it later so we can get there? Um, because it's true, all of these dregs, as much as they say radical left, radical is not radical enough a term for how huge a psychopath Marjorie Taylor Greene is and how stupid a huge psychopath Matt Gates and uh, Madison Cawthorn are. And Marjorie Taylor Greene who goes and hangs out with Nick Fuentes and speaks at his events yeah. and afterwards suffers no repercussions. And that's the key is to tie, if it is the case that they're the base, Marjorie Taylor Greene to the leadership of the comp of the party and hold their feet to the fire for how they handle that. Mm -hmm. And it's the challenge of progressives to differentiate the right wing populist movement from the left wing populist movement because the right wing populist movement loves itself some authoritarian Putinism. Yeah. Is woke as hell. They call their events like the Reawaken America tour. They are woke in the event that they, you know, are happy there's they want to wake you up in the middle of the night and lock you up if you're gay. Yeah. If democracy is sleep, they're woke, buddy. <laughs> They've awakened from it. Um, and by the way, like we're 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 trying to break down the the potential consequences for this sort of narrative that they're pushing, and not just them. We're we're focusing on the elected officials, but bear in mind there's a massive media arm to this as well. People like Tucker Carlson and Sean Hannity and others, especially Tucker Carlson. And that is not to say though that you have to support any of this. You can you can and should point out corruption wherever it is, including in countries that might be being assaulted. You don't necessarily have to think that we should be helping Ukraine. I think it's weird to believe that we shouldn't, but to support all of these other wars, that's a weird stance. I think it's weird to say that we shouldn't as you're literally invested in the companies that are benefiting from it. Like I, I don't understand the stance. You're cosplaying as if you're anti-war, but it isn't consistent across anything else that you say and do. But again, you're not obligated to do any of this, but the way they're communicating about it seems tailor-made to PO as many Americans as possible. And bear in mind, like when she says, you know, it's going great for Russia. I think that that's insane, as we'll get into. But they are doing a lot of damage. Uh, Zelensky announced that there's a hundred thousand civilians in Mariupol, which has been being besieged for a couple of weeks now, that have effectively no food, no water, and are constantly being bombed. There could be massive amounts of death in Mariupol. So all of that is true, but they're going about it so weird and communicating about their thoughts of this war. They're so stupid, they don't understand how complicated this is. And worse, they don't understand that everybody understands how complicated it is. Everybody understands that there's like American imperialistic instincts that have been really bad and really misguided and rise the level of war crimes in other countries. I get it, but we need to focus on this specific thing. And, and more importantly, the Marjorie Taylor Greene wing of the Republican Party, which according to her represents the entirety of the Republican Party. Every mm -hmm. decision they have is incredibly weak and ruins America's standing in the pecking order of the world, right? Because either they don't, they basically don't want us to do anything. Mm -hmm. They don't want us, they want us to allow Russia to prove it's strong and just take over Ukraine. Now, I hate that that has like war hockey implications, but that's the truth. Like, and, and it emboldens China to keep doing what it's doing. If you don't fight back in some way against it, what's their alternative? Their alternative is to just lay down and not even put in sanctions against yeah. Russian oligarchs. If you can't do that, what do you want us to do? Nothing. She doesn't have a plan. She doesn't have any suggestions. Not. As Noam Chomsky outlined, like the right wing has just become a barrier to it's not a, a party with any ideology. It's just a barrier to democracy. Exactly. Yeah, they're they're opposed to even the diplomatic efforts. And look, you get to be opposed to things. We're we're opposed to direct military involvement, obviously. But she's opposed to everything and highly critical of it, by the way, without putting forward any plan of her own.
There's some fascinating information coming out of Ukraine. Again, as we always say, massive grains of salt on all of this. But apparently two Russian soldiers have been caught venting about Putin's Boles war against Ukraine in an intercepted phone call. So apparently they reference a lot of things, including that one soldier drove over his colonel with a tank. Soldiers say basically it's an S show here, I'll put it that way. And so let's get into some more of what they revealed. Having waited for the right moment during battle, this one soldier ran over the commander with a tank as he stood next to him, injuring both of his legs. Now, the Daily Beast says that they were not able to independently confirm the version of events in that conversation. But a Putin lackey did confirm that one of these officers was injured around that time. So it is possible that that is how, again, grains of salt. But there's more than just running over one of your commanding officers with a tank. After telling his friend that Ukrainian forces tore apart a column of Russian forces sent along with his own unit, he described complete disarray among the Russian military, with 50% of the unit suffering from frostbite on their feet. Quote, but they don't plan to treat them in the field hospital. Soldiers also complained about having Kevlar vests that lack hard panel armor, but they're ignored when they bring it up. On the fourth day of their deployment, the general commanding their unit told them it'd be over quickly. Quote, do you know what he told us? It's no secret to anyone that there are only a few hours until this special operation is over. And now those hours are still going on into the hundreds of hours. And so again, like we always say, it is impossible to know with certainty about these sorts of claims being made in the middle of a war. From a Ukrainian government that obviously is not an objective source for information necessarily. But this does track with you know all of the other information that's been coming out of there over the course of the last few weeks. It is easy to imagine that soldiers are having these sorts of conversations, Brett. I mean, I would chalk all that up to like propaganda and selective story, uh, story selection and all of that. Potentially. Um, and, yeah. and and I, I am fully confident that in a in from the fog of war, you can bump into enough stuff and pull it out of the fog and writing your news story and pick things that fit your narrative, right? And I would say that I'm sure it is the case that the Ukrainian government is choosing narratives that help it. And I'm equally sure that the, I'm more sure, but it's pretty close that the Russian government is pulling out things and propagandizing around it to forward narratives that benefit the Russian government. That is why I resort back to what's happening, how long it's been happening, and facts I can corroborate on the ground. And the mm-hmm. fact is that after receiving an insurance, an insurance that an assurance that Ukraine would not join NATO, Putin still invaded. The fact is that he did invade. I'm against those kinds of invasions, and everybody should be, whether it's red, white, or blue, or yellow, or any other color. It is not a good practice, and. I mean, Marjorie Taylor Greene's right when she says that Russia has been successful in many aspects of this. They've captured territory, they hold on to it. Uh, holding on to it will be more and more difficult as time passes, depending on who lives there and how hard they fight. But it is absolutely obvious that this is harder than Russia thought it would be, as well it should be, as obvious it was going to be. And uh, many people were right about what happened on the in the lead up to this. And I will trust them more as time goes by. And I will trust less and less people like Tucker Carlson, Marjorie Taylor Greene, and the entire right wing messaging machine that is playing apologist for Putin because they want a Christian nationalist state in America. And this is the closest example to one they can find. Yeah. The only thing I would say was I would I would admit that um, in the lead up to this, I didn't expect that Russia would have this sort of difficulty. I mean, we've heard a lot about the Russian military that would lead it to believe that this is well within its abilities. That is why some of these developments have been so shocking to me and to a lot of people. I'm not an expert on the region or the Russian military, but I was surprised. And by the way, we've been giving updates over the past few weeks about one particular area of difficulty, which is the deaths of the leaders of this effort. Apparently, they're now up to five Russian generals having been killed. And there's reports, you can read about it in Insider, about the fact that one of the reasons the generals are dying at this rate is normally you lead from behind and you just you transmit information. That's part of logistics is getting information to the front. But they're having so much difficulty with that that they have to be at the front. Not just in getting the information there, but getting the conscripts to actually do what they want. They're facing a lot of difficulty with that as one would expect. 
These are in a lot of cases conscripted forces. Despite Russia saying that they would not use them outside of their own territory, they are and that's causing a lot of trouble. And that in turn is leading to about a general a week being killed. Anyway, with that said, we have to go to our next break. When we come back, we're gonna be talking about a walkout at Disney. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Disney decides that it is going to let itself be taken over by the LGBTQ IA plus minus divided by sign, little carrot thingy, little squiggly that goes above the letters in Spanish group. When they decide that they're going to allow their company to be renormalized by the radical trans activists inside the company, they lose business and they will lose business and they should lose business. And this just demonstrates once again, America's biggest corporations are being held hostage by the woke because they are cowards. They're absolute cowards. I see. See, here's the thing about working here at The Daily Wire. We pay you to work here. You do not dictate to us how the company is run. That's absurd. I think it's absolutely insane to think that employees have no rights in a workplace, have no say over how they're treated. But this is a guy who wants labor to have absolutely no power. Never forget it. Never forget also, as was pointed out by Jorby in the chat, the right has two versions of one joke. I identify as an attack helicopter and LGBTQ J, D, they're putting other things there. They got symbols and stuff. Uh, we're talking about people's fundamental humanity. I know that it's a joke to people like Ben Shapiro, uh, but these people don't wanna be erased from public consciousness, erased from uh, discussion. They don't want the kids of uh, gay couples to feel like outcasts. So look, some people have expectations for a massive corporation like Disney. Uh, by the way, so does he. So the, the 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 ruse, the con that is baked into everything that Ben Shapiro was saying there is, it is wrong of these leftists to believe that a corporation should care about what they want. And how dare you threaten Disney with retracting your support if they don't give you what they want. Also, if Disney doesn't support our side, we're gonna bankrupt them. That's the con. We get to, you have to follow, you have to support our politicians, our legislation, our values. That's just reasonable. I mean, it's in the Bible. Them expecting you to do the same with reasonable, humane policies, that's craziness. So just don't miss what Ben Shapiro is doing there. But uh, Brett, I wanted to give you a chance to jump in before we transition to the important part of this. Dude, like <laughs> trucker protest. You're on the side of the truckers telling the companies what to do. Mm -hmm. You can't do a mandate. This is not my point. This is what JR said this morning, like mask mandates, all that stuff. If the companies are gonna say you need to wear a mask if you're on the production line, which is it? That's a safety standard. I have a video coming up on Rebel HQ when we've got um, uh, of Sarah Palin saying that, you yeah. know, that, uh, that uh, the vice president Kamala Harris should go to an oil field because they have great standards for safety there. It's like, yeah, because labor movements. Because labor, yes. Because all of that, you total moron. And also, he always says, oh, people, in, in this longer version of that, he says that, oh, you're going to kowtow to people because they want to cause, a man wants to cosplay as a woman. Ugh. Like, dude, I'm a Jewish human being. You wear a yarmulke, you're cosplaying. You have an outfit that you wear based on your personal identity, right? Why can't you let someone else have that same freedom, you total idiot? And if I were to call what you're doing stupid cosplaying, you might say, Brett, stop being a jerk to me. And that's fine. And yeah. I think I should stop being a jerk to you. Why don't you stop being such a jerk to people who just wanna live their life according to their beliefs and who they are as individuals? Isn't that the fundamental underpinning of your concept of liberalism? Yeah. The individual over the collective. Let those individuals live their lives. I think that sounds very reasonable. And uh, we believe that employees should be able to have a say like this. And in fact, in this case, he just he hates the fact that this walkout is happening because we have now uh, gotten to the point where employees of Walt Disney have staged walkouts uh, as well as coordinated social media campaigns. Uh, yesterday, you can see right there uh, the walkout happening. There had been a week of uh, what were being called abbreviated walkouts during scheduled breaks during part of what's being called Disney do better. Uh, but now it's progressed to uh, full on walkouts to demonstrate uh, how much they care about this, their passion for this issue and their lack of interest in being affiliated with a company 
that is paid massive amounts of money by people who believe that it's like family friendly and whatever, but is in fact supporting politicians who are passing legislation, not just in Florida, but in multiple states to say that we like certain sorts of families. The rest, I guess we can't technically outlaw you. So at the very least, we're gonna shove you in the closet, shut up, don't talk about what your family is like, we're not interested. As long as Disney is supporting politicians like DeSantis, that is what the message that they're sending to their employees and to their fan base. And so we've got some more photos we can show you of the walkouts happening, love to see that. We want to see employees getting organized, whether it's about their conditions inside of the job, what their job is doing, all of that. Now Disney has put out a response saying, to all who come to this happy place, welcome. Disney Parks Experiences and Products is committed to creating experiences that support family values for every family and will not stand for discrimination in any form. We oppose any legislation that infringes on basic human rights and stand in solidarity and support our LGBTQIA plus cast crew and Imagineers and fans who make their voices heard today and every day. That's the statement that they've got it now. It has been an evolving statement over the past couple of weeks because back on the 7th, we're not gonna run you through every step. I'm sure you've been following to some extent but the CEO of Disney was very defensive initially about being criticized over supporting politicians in Florida and all of that. And it's steadily gotten better as there's been more and more sustained pressure, including by the way, a big drop off in their stock price. So I'm sure that probably had the most causal impact, but people care about this stuff and they're right to. I don't think that that's anything to be ashamed about no matter how much Ben Shapiro might screech about it. What do you think, Brett? That statement has evolved because of pressure and in that evolution, it has gotten better. And I think Ben Shapiro would support, I would I would think that he would support some kind of freedom of speech protections for employees to improve things. Also, he said in his statement, listen, we run the company, we tell you what to do. If you told us how to run the company, that would be ridiculous. Listen, I've been an employee at many companies. And if I told them how to run a department that doesn't, that I have no no knowledge about, that makes sense. But according to Ben Shapiro's own logic, he could tell his employees to walk into a fire. And if they said that sounds dangerous, he would say that is absurd that you would tell me how to run my company. Mm -hmm. There are fundamental protections for people and also like, Disney, to say that Disney is insanely woke is not the truth. Disney is insanely cautious. There's yeah. statements from the Pixar employees who say, yeah, we try to put some kind of LGBTQ friendly things into these movies. And at every time we're told to stop. I've worked with Disney many times. I had like, there are so many restrictions. It's true. Like I tried to put a monkey in a video and they said, you have to do a drawing of a monkey and don't get us started on our history with primates. Like I was like, I don't know what that is. but they have a lot of very specific rules because I don't know what that is either. Unless you're talking about the multiple racist depictions that they've done of different people. But is that the what you're handling about? of animals on set, basically? Oh, and, I see. Okay. And the way that you anthropomorphize monkey or primates in ways that you wouldn't with other animals, you would treat animals more like. It. Anyways, there's a lot. Sure. Of, That's there's true. a lot. There's just like especially orangutans was in one of the bylaws. I was like, I have no clue, but apparently there was a very specific orangutan incident. But um, but they are corporate. If corporations are people, they're people that want to stay alive, and so they'll do a lot of things to stay alive, and they'll sacrifice people if they feel like they're being opportun, if they need to be opportunistic to stay alive. And all we're saying is like, yo, if you want to stay alive, you got to treat people better. Yeah. Or we'll withhold our commerce. I feel like that's a pretty above board, straightforward relationship, and. Believe me, these companies will find the lowest common denominator, the the best approach to minimize risk. They have tons of actuaries who do that all stinking day. Yeah, and as a result, um, you'll get we'll get better. It'll get better. Yeah, and I I, I will close by reminding you that you being willing to withhold your financial support if they don't uh, support your values is exactly what he is telling his side to do while shaming you for doing that. So don't miss it. Anyway, with that said, we're out of our first hour. We do have more coming though. So if you're watching on YouTube, Twitch, the members app, all of that, we got some amazing stuff to talk about, including Donald Trump retracting an endorse, then getting slammed by Stormy Daniels. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a few. 
Mickey C the silver haired dragon says, I understand why the hateful right wing racists don't want their children taught the truth about our history with all others. They reserve the right to raise their children to be future haters and racists. Teaching their children the facts might have them questioning their parents lies. Yeah, that's what yeah. I'm meeting about. Yeah, it's like if you ask any question about how we got to the, the other part of what I was gonna say about the constitution and it banning um, discrimination based on race is if you ask any questions about how it got there, you have to then admit that like the people who started this country owned slaves and through progressive ideology and action, yeah. we, we got better. Everything yeah. that got better about America was thanks to progressive activism. Thanks for listening to the full episode of The Damage Report. Support our work, listen ad-free, access members-only bonus content, and more by subscribing to Apple Podcasts at apple.co slash TYT. I'm your host, John Adarola. I'll see you soon.